Welcome back to Gaelic Games Fan TV. It's the preview show for this weekend's All Ireland Senior Hurling Championship action. We're going to be looking ahead to five games taking place in the All Ireland Senior Hurling Championship taking place this weekend. We'll be looking ahead to the Joe McDonough as well, but primarily focusing on both Munster and Leinster. Big, big games taking place across both provinces, in particular Clare versus Limerick. I think that stands out as the game that absolutely everybody is excited for. You've got Waterford versus Cork as well which I'm sure Matthew will have a few opinions on. And then, of course, as well, in Leinster, Wexford-Dublin, I think, is the game that really stands out uh, in Leinster because Wexford and Dublin have been two sides. Very neck and neck in terms of competing for that third-place position um, in the Leinster Championship. And then we'll also be looking at galway Carlo, Antrim Galway, and a few of the games uh, in the Joe McDonough as well. Matthew, first of all, uh, the Hurland Championship is here, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, and the Munster Hurland Championship, like it, it might just be... The best competition we have in the GA, in all honesty, like especially when you look at the competitive nature of it and everything else. So great to great to have it all back. It is, and uh, yeah, thanks for having me on again, Aaron. Yeah, in fairness, the Monster Championship it is probably the best championship in the Gaelic Games at the moment. Uh, when you look at the football championships, it all seems one sided, and then you have the Leinster Championship. Two sides more than anything in Godwin Kilkenny, and then you have this month's championship, and it's so hard to call. Um, even even now, like you know, I'm trying to think of my head to Clare and Limerick will probably finish on the top two. Then you have Cork and Tipperary that will probably fight for third place, and then in fifth you probably have Waterford. But then again, Waterford could easily turn it on. Clare could um, inherit the Waterford gene and uh, do do well in the league, and then do very badly in the championship. Limerick, there was a bit of there was a hint there that they weren't up to their usual standards in the league, especially with the likes of Sean Finn at centre-back, Dick Land not fu fully fit, Darrell Donovan's going to miss the first two rounds as well. So there is question marks over Limerick too. You have Tipperary there, very inconsistent. Like the free-taking is a big issue there. And then you have Cork, who did very well to be fair to them at the end of the league. You have goal scorers there like Alan Connolly. But can they produce it against a Limerick, against a Clare, against a Tipperary? And that will be the main asset test for Cork. But of course, they have to beat Watford this weekend before they can even think of the big dogs. So, um, yeah, a lot to look forward to this weekend. And um, and yeah, with, with all the football kind of um, one-sided games last weekend, isn't it re refreshing now to see hurling games that you don't know what way it's going to go? Absolutely, yeah, and I suppose we better better start with the with the big one. Clare against Limerick taking place uh, in Ennis. Absolutely huge game for multiple different reasons. Obviously, massive rivals. Um, I think the fact that Limerick are obviously bidding for six monsters in a row, bidding for five in a row in the All Ireland series, is really what uh, what delves into it. Clare have won just one of the last six games uh, against Limerick, dating back as far as 2018, and that was obviously the game that took place in the Gaelic grounds last year. So I mean, like when you're talking about big matches, it really doesn't get bigger than this. It doesn't know, and uh, this is an absolutely huge game, and it probably epitomises um, the hugeness of the game that it is sold out in Ennis. And apparently, there is rumours that they're going to increase the capacity of Cusack Park. I don't know, can you do that? But they're going to do it anyway. Um, yeah, it's going to be a massive game. No doubts about it. And these are probably the two best teams in Munster. When you look at the form book over the last few seasons, uh, Clare beat Limerick, obviously, um, in the round robin stage, and then the Munster final, they, they, arguably they were denied a lay free to equalise the game and bring it extra time. So they'll have a lot at the back of their minds and thinking we could go on and beat Limerick. A lot of big questions for both sides going into this one, including injuries. Number one for Limerick, does Sean Finn start as uh, full back? I doubt it. You'd probably start Dan Morrissey there. You'd probably start Mike Casey there if he's fit. Does Declan Halland go into centre back despite being unfit? Or do you put William O'Donoghue there? Who's going to come in for Darrow Donovan in midfield? Where does Cahill O'Neill play? Does he play around wing back? Does he play as um, in the forward line? Does Garrow Hagerty get his form back? There's a lot of questions to be answered in this game. And a lot of questions as well. The main question for Clare is Tony Kelly. Is he going to come back into the team? Because he hasn't been visible in the league. Is he going to come back for this game or is he going to be on the bench? Because Clare really did well in the league without him. You have you still have Shane O'Donnell coming on and adding extra explosiveness in the final. You still have young players like Shane Meehan who could come in and do a job. You still have Davy Fitzgerald, who was absolutely a breathtaking in the league. You have Aidan McCarthy, who was very good in the forward line. You have the likes of Ian Galvin there, who's very, very consistent. You have uh, Peter Duggan. So, yeah, Clare have some excellent players. And there's a question, does Tony Kelly um, even... And let's say 80% fit Tony Kelly come straight back into the team. 
Brian, no one's going to answer that question now on Sunday. So, yeah, a lot of questions go into the game. And above all else, the atmosphere in Cusick Park is going to be absolutely electric. And, um, yeah, can't wait for it. Yeah, and I'm just looking at it here. Like Aidan McCarthy, their their top scorer so far with with two thirty six. He he's been absolutely outstanding. Mark Rogers has obviously been very good. Davy Fitzgerald, arguably the the player of the league. Yeah, he he was very very good as well. John Conlon at centre back, very impressive. Um, so like, is there almost an argument that Clare have looked so strong, so good that there really isn't any rush to to bring Tony Kelly in and having won the league without Tony Kelly, if they were then got to go and turn over Limerick, like that would be some statement to be the all Ireland champions without potentially your best player. It'd be massive. And it, it would actually just show that Claire are more su- are suited even without Tony Kelly in the team. And it brings it back to many arguments um, down through the years. If you do it without your best players, then Limerick have done that for years. Let's not forget. Like Keen Lynch has been injured in and out of the team. We've had a few players. Declan Hannah was injured all last season. They still cope without him, putting William O'Donoghue who's centre back. If Clare were to cope without Tony Kelly and beat Limerick, it would be some statement of intent. Because like Clare arguably are the second best team in Ireland. Yes, Kilkenny have reached the final two seasons in a row, but at the same time, Clare are the team that put it up to Limerick the most times. When you look at it down through the years, when you look at their four previous championship meetings and um, them separately, they drew in Cusick Park, um, it, where Aaron Fitzgerald um it, 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 you got a foul off Garrod Hagerty and, and Garrod Hagerty got a red card. That was a draw. Then in the Munster final, it went extra time because of a draw because of Tony Kelly's sideline puck. And Clare could have easily won that game because that was one of the mo- the best Munster final performances ever from a losing side. Then they beat Limerick in their backyard last season. And then last and then last year, they could have easily got a free to equalise and bring it to extra time again. So Clare have been really, really close to um, Limerick. I think their issue was to get over Kilkenny. And they have done so twice in the league. So it would give them a lot of confidence going into this season as well. And at the same time, Clare haven't won a Munster since the 90s as well. So it's a huge opportunity with this crop of players to go on and win a Munster championship. But then at the same time, the question is, would you bring back Tony Kelly? Yes, it's Limerick. But then if you take, play devil's advocate for a bit for Clare. If they lose this game, they'll go on to a, the next game, I believe it's in Parky Keeve against Cork. If they lose that, then they're in bother. So they'd want to start off like a house in Ver. They'd want to start off with a win. And maybe Tony Kelly come, coming back. You know, I think probably the perfect middle ground here would be to put Tony Kelly on the bench. If things go yeah. wrong in the first half, bring him on. And I think Claire will probably do that. Brian Lowen will um, stick to those beliefs as well. And uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be just very interesting to see how fit Tony actually is going into this game. Because obviously he got a very, very nasty injury in the league. He didn't play for the whole league. He got a big rest over it now. How will he fare um, being not 100% fit going into this game against Limerick? That's the massive question to ask. Yeah, I think leaving him on the bench probably makes the the most sense. And then you can bring him on you know, with, with 10, 15 minutes to go and that can really sort of make a, make a big impact in fairness. Um, how, how can Clare hurt this Limerick side, do you think? Because obviously Limerick, as you said, bidding for... Six in a row uh, Munster titles, five in a row obviously in the All Ireland series. Um, they're on an incredible run, as we very well know. They they seem unbeatable, albeit Clare did beat them in the Gaelic rounds last year. So how did this Clare team hurt this Limerick team? What can they do to to topple this Limerick team uh, in this game? I think a few things, and Kilkenny did this in the semi final of the league. Uh, push up at the uh, puck outs because Darrell Dunham is not there anymore. He won't be able to get clean ball and um, Clare can attack their midfield that way. If you put David Fitzgerald at the midfield and that's a Limerick midfield less Darrow Donovan. William O'Donoghue will be interesting to see how he um, develops even without Darrow Donovan in the team and who will go into midfield. Will Keane Lynch pop back into midfield? But then that takes the role of the forward then. Who will go into centre forward? Will Donald Dolly be tr- trusted in this Limerick team? Like I think they need to get their matchups right as well, Clare. Like Adam Hogan did an excellent job on the Kilkenny forward line in the league final. It'd be interesting to see who Adam Hogan, Connor Cleary, all them great clear defenders actually go on. Will they go on Aaron Galan? Will they go on Peter Casey? Or even Seamus Flanagan? I, I'd imagine Seamus Flanagan and Connor Cleary are going to have a tussle uh, on Sunday. That's going without saying to the full back and the, and, and the full forward there as well. Like 
Gerald Hagerty getting his face. Clare done that in the previous few seasons, and Gerald Hagerty has got annoyed. That's a, a one area that Clare could target as well. And another thing, this really depends on the Limerick lineup. Who will they start as fullback? If they start Sean Finn at fullback, I think Clare have massive opportunities to get joy there. And what Kilkenny did, which was very, very clever at the league semi final, was poke the ball long into TJ Reid. And I'd imagine for Clare, Shane O'Donnell would be in a full forward because he's back to full fitness and he came out in the league final. If Clare get quality ball at the Shane O'Donnell and he gets a spin on Sean Finn in the full, at full back, if Limerick play him there, then that could cause all sorts of havoc for Limerick. But I honestly don't think Limerick will play him there. I think they'll play him at corner back. I think they'll go with Dan Morrissey and uh, Mike K- or Mike Casey at full back. Barry Nash probably a corner back if he's fit enough. The, the interesting aspect as well: who starts at centre back? Will it be Declan Hannan? Will it be the Troy? Will it be the Troy one in a uh, Cahill O'Neill? Will it be someone else at centre back? Will they put William O'Donoghue? But they can't afford to put Will O'Donoghue there because of the Darren Donovan situation. So maybe Clare can go for their half back line as well. That could be a weakness that Limerick um, that needs targeting there as well. So, yeah, there's a lot of angles that Clare could do, but I think it all depends on what team Limerick actually go with um, later on in the week. It'll probably obviously be announced, but it will be so interesting. I'll be intrigued to, um, to discover whether Sean Finn will start a full back. Will they start Declan Hannon? They're the two main questions, and they'll be two kind of areas where Clare could challenge Limerick, and obviously, depending on the team. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and I suppose for Limerick, like they didn't obviously have Dan Morrissey the last day as well, like against Kilkenny. So obviously him coming back in will be will be huge. So it'll be interesting to see like where does Dan Morrissey play, where does Sean Finn play, um, because I suppose both of them and obviously Aaron Costello was in their cornerback. Like Limerick's fullback line looks so vulnerable, as you said, against Kilkenny, and like that's so rare. Like you you don't normally see Limerick get dominated as much as they did. So like at the same time. Like you'd have to see a response here from from John Coley's men because I can't remember the last time Limerick had back to back performances like that as an example. So you might have to go back as as far back as twenty seventeen or twenty eighteen. Certainly in this dominant spell, anyway, Limerick haven't really had back to back games where they've been absolutely dominated. You could even think back to last year. Arm. And I know there was the four in a row and things like that, but there was the game where they lost to Clare and they drew against Tipperary, where they were very, very lucky to come out of Sippa Stadium with a draw. So you could point towards them two games. Even the three in a row, the game against Waterford as well, the first game in Munster. Waterford are not that good. We, we know that as a fact. But Waterford could have beat them that day. A David Fitzgerald uh, Waterford side, they could have beaten Limerick easily. So hmm. my point is, like, Limerick need to be on it for the first whistle. And again, it's so crucial for both of these sides to get a win, just to start off the, on the right side. Because if you suddenly go into the second game in a, in a Munster Championship campaign, needing a win, you're under pressure then. I think both sides will honestly go for this game as well. And another thing where Clare could target Kilkenny, is, um, sorry, Limerick, is the midfield. Kilkenny did that in the league semi-final in Super Valley Park at Heave. And Limerick were actually misplacing passes. It was un- unusual what Limerick were actually doing. Like Keane Lynch was very, very poor that day. William who wasn't his usual self. And that was mainly because of the pressure that Kilkenny exerted on them. Clare need to exert the same pressure come Sunday. And there's no doubts about it. But um, then again, we've seen this Limerick team struggle in the league. Then once it comes to championship, bang, they're right on form. But then again, when you look at it last year again, they only really got into full peak Limerick, when you think about it, in the second half of the all Ireland semi-final against Galway, or the moment that Henry Sheffman said, we're leaving one up top. That was the moment where Limerick actually went into life. The Munster Championship, I don't think Limerick were up at their top speed, really. Once it reached the all Ireland series, there was no stopping them after that. And I think the main point in this, and I think a lot of people have said this on podcasts or whatnot, if Limerick get knocked out of Munster, I think that's the period where Limerick have to get knocked out. Because if you don't get them knocked out of Munster, they will go into the all Ireland series and they'll breeze through everybody with their performances in Craw Park. So I think the main objective for a Clare, a Tipperary or, or a Cork later on in the season, not just this game on Sunday, is to just take out Limerick early. Just save all the hard work for later on in the season. Cork could have done it last year. Limerick got away with it. 
could they be caught this year? It remains to be seen. But then again, you look at Clare, they won the league title. But when you look at their la- the last two league winners, Watford, they were touted as uh, the, the, the second best team in the country, if you like, behind Limerick. They finished near the bottom of the of the Munster group afterwards, only winning one game. Limerick last season, as I mentioned previously, were very, very poor in three out of the four games in particular. So Clare cannot fall into that trap thinking, OK, we've won the league. You know, we're, we're the we're the be alls and ends alls, but at the same time, you look at you look at Clare's temperament after the league final. They weren't over celebrating. They were thinking, and they were saying in the post match interviews as well. Shane O'Donnell, Brian Lowe, and all them. They, look, it's a great to get a national trophy. It's great to get a league title. Next game, Nimerick. That is the main uh, game for us, and I think that's what Clare were focusing on, even after the key. Or even before the Kilkenny League final, they didn't care. To, they did obviously care the national trophy was on the line, but the main aim in their heads was to get ready for the twenty first of April, and that was always going to be in their heads, no matter what how the league turned out. Absolutely, yeah. Like, and just looking at Limerick um, coming into this game, one loss in their last sixteen Munster Championship games, one draw uh, in in that period as well. Obviously, that uh, go, goes back to both the clear defeat and obviously the Tipperary draw. Um, as you said before, like coming in on the back of of quite a heavy defeat, um, but at the same time, the, their overall league campaign was still fairly impressive. Like you had the likes of Adam English, Cahill O'Neill, Donegal Darling, like three very young players, obviously coming in. Cahill O'Neill's obviously been there a few years. Like I suppose for Limerick, though, like with the fact that they were beaten by Kilkenny, as we said before, like it would be some statement for them to go and, and beat Clare in their own backyard, especially after Clare beating Limerick in their own backyard. Like, I feel like if Limerick lose, it's not the end of the world. But I feel like if if Clare lose, it'd be a massive, massive setback because it feels like a massive opportunity for Clare to beat Limerick while they're vulnerable. But it would probably be vintage Limerick to go there, silence the doubters a little bit and put in a statement victory because how many times have we seen that with Limerick down the years? As TJ Ryan said to me, I mean, that article for the Limerick Voice newspaper, they've made the impossible um, possible, these Limerick players. They've made the fans believe. And that is because, not just because of their quality and things like that, it's because of their hard work on the training ground. And it's their hard work in the, in, in the field as well. And this, this is the standard that Clare need to get to, to beat Limerick. And I think that's well documented. Clare need to get in Limerick's faces from the off. If they don't get in Limerick's face from the off, that will give Limerick the oxygen to keep going in the first half and maybe um, strike a few goals in the first half to maybe even end clear. I don't think Brian Lowen is going to go into this game thinking whoopee do or whatever. I do think Clare are just going to go for it in the first few minutes. And it'll be interesting to see how Limerick actually respond in their full back line and their half back line. Will they respond to the challenge? Who knows? But it's important for Clare just to stamp their authority on this game. Because if they don't stamp their authority, Limerick could trample all over them. And we've seen that in the past with uh, this Limerick team. Even when the form hasn't necessarily been good for them, they still bite back. They are a, an amazing team for a reason. And they're going for five in a row for a reason. They are just an incredible hurling team. And Clare would need a brilliant, brilliant performance. I think, honestly, it's a sort of situation. Limerick can win the game at 75, 80%. Clare need to get above 90% to win this game because of the opponents that they are facing. So it's it's a massive game. It is massive for uh, both sides, particularly Clare, maybe to stamp their authority on the um, equation as well. But let's not forget, if Limerick lose this game, they're suddenly on the back foot of staying in Munster. And like playing David's advocate, Limerick could have a hard um, year in the Munster Championship after a defeat to Clare. Like, let's not forget, they still have to go to Cork away. They still have to, okay, they're playing Watford and Tipperary at home, but still there's very tough games along the track, even after Clare for Limerick. So it's crucial that they win this game as well. Yeah, like, and what's interesting about Limerick as well is, like, you obviously mentioned the last time they obviously got beat by, by Clare, they went out and played Tipperary um, a week later, and that's actually the same again. Like, they've they've, they've obviously got Clare away, and then they've got Tipperary at home um, straight after this one. So it's absolutely massive from a from a Limerick perspective. Um, like, what can what what can Limerick do? Do you think to 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 hurt Clare? Sort of looking at it in, in terms of a flip reversal because Clare. 
obviously have you know obviously unbeaten in the league they've looked absolutely um unplayable at times Aidan McCarthy has been outstanding Davy Fitzgerald maybe Tony Kelly to come off the bench as well so like is there anything Limerick can bring that Clare won't be able to deal with do you think on Sunday I think Shane O'Donnell is probably the key to come back into it if you're talking about new players coming in from the league campaign I do think he is a massive player he's a speedy player more than anything Shane Meehan, good young player. If he comes onto the pitch, like he could cause havoc in that um, Limerick team as well. Dermot Ryan, with his long pocket of the ball from the wing back position, will be massive. Um, I think Darrell Owen is a very good defender. Adam Hogan, obviously, has been excellent last season. Was very good in the final against Kilkenny. Was nearly man the match in that final as well. And I think, honestly, the main reason Clare lost the game uh, last year in the Gaelic rounds in, in that um, Munster final, it wasn't because of refereeing decisions and it wasn't, even though I do think it was a free to Clare in the last minute, I, I don't think it was refereeing decisions whatsoever. I think it was Clare's inability to shoot at, at crucial moments of the game. They had like, I think, 50% shark or something like that in the Munster final, which wasn't good enough to beat Limerick. Against Kilkenny and against other teams, that has gone to 60-70%. And the main probably culprit to that is Aidan McCarthy. When you look at the freeze he's taking, like if you have like Aidan McCarthy taking 11 freeze in the league, he's going to take, you'll be confident that he'll take about nine or 10 at least. And you need that to beat Limerick. There's no doubts about it. So I do think Clare have all the ingredients to, to beat Limerick on Sunday. Whether they'll produce them on pitch is another story, but... Yeah, I think Shane O'Donnell could be a massive um, asset to Clare because Clare played well even without Shane O'Donnell in the Ron Robin stages and the semi final of the league. They just got better when he was in the team against Kilkenny in the final when he came on off the bench. So it'd be interesting to see what he can add on Sunday if he does start at his. Ultimately, then, in terms of a prediction, what are you what, what are you thinking? It's such a hard one to call this. It's really difficult. And you could probably change your mind uh, later in the week when you're when you're doing these predictions. Hmm. I'm gonna edge, actually. I was gonna edge at the Limerick because of the inevitability of this team. I'm actually gonna go for a draw though. I'm gonna go for a draw. I think it'll be a tight game. I think both sides will give not give an inch. I think it'll be a draw. If if it's not a draw, either side could win this by a point. But I'm going to go for a draw in the final prediction. It's going to be a difficult one to call, though. Yeah, like when you look at it, like the last six games between Limerick and Clare have all been by a point. They've all been decided by a point as well. So, like, it really, really could go either way. Um, and obviously with the fact of the final in 2022 as well, like going to extra time. So, like, that was a draw full time. Um, like, funny enough, I, I actually backed Clare earlier in the week and even in my all Ireland Hurling predictions uh, video, which... I suppose it would be out would have been out a few days ago by the time people are watching this. I actually did say that I fancy Clare to win, but I've actually I'm actually now going the other way because I I just think Limerick are are, are they're the perfect side to go and upset a party. And I could see them going to Clare. We're Clare, you know, with the form that they're in, all the Clare fans believe in, everybody backing them to go and, and do the business and get a huge win against Limerick. I could see Limerick going there, putting in a bit of a, a shock performance and, and beating them and I think the big difference is, you know, Limerick are going to have key players back. Um, you know, Aaron Glan is, is going to start. Keane Lynch is going to start. Um, they're going to have more or less nearly their, their best start in 15. So I could see Limerick going there and bursting the bubble a little bit and, um, yeah, maybe humble and clear a little bit. I don't think it would be a hammering or anything. I still think it will only be one or two points, but I could see Limerick going there and beating them. Interesting, yeah. Um, I normally back Limerick in these situations as well because they're they're just an unstoppable team, and they are probably going to win the All Ireland this year. Even though um, AI actually believes that Tipperary will win it and to uh, stop Limerick winning the five in a row. But yeah, I, think, I think that robot must be broke. <laughs> I, mean, I, th I think I think ChatGPT needs an update. <laughs> probably does, but uh, having said that, though, like yeah, when you look at the omens in this. Tipperary did stop Kilkenny's five in a row to drive for five. Who's yeah. to say history can't try twice? So we'll talk about Tipperary probably next week once they get in action in Munster. But um, but yeah, I, I honestly think Limber could win the five in a row. And if any team are going to stop him, it's Clare. And maybe this is an opportunity for Clare in Ennis to stamp their authority on it. 
but honestly, I, I can't call it. So I'm going to go for a draw. I know it's a cop out, but I just can't call who's going to win this game because it just it's so so tight to call. Really is, and it's probably going to be game of the weekend. Well, not probably. It is going to be game of the weekend, and I just can't wait uh, until it gets underway. Yeah, like like at the start of the week, I I fancy Clare to win it. Now I fancy Limerick to win it. Maybe by the time Sunday comes around, I'll think it will be a draw. Like it's and and again, it is that type of game where you probably change your mind in terms of how this game is going to go every ten minutes. One thing I would be fairly certain doesn't happen is a hammering or something like that. And I've said that now, so you know, n- knowing that I've said that that now, like there probably will be a, a one sided bat run or something like that. But um, I, I do fancy Limerick to to just about edge it. By um, I'm gonna go by a single point. Waterford and Cork uh, up next. Um, I suppose firstly focusing in on Waterford. Um, one win in five against Cork uh, in the in the championship in their last five games. Two wins in their last eight Munster championship games as well. And both of them were against Tipperary. Um, one win in five games this year in the league. Obviously that was against Offaly on the opening day. So it just hasn't really clicked for for Waterford and. When you're listening to other previews and everything else, and I was listening to a few other podcasts, like a lot of people think Cork are going to absolutely hammer Waterford. Like a lot of people think this could be double digits and, and 10 plus, which don't get me wrong, I, I think Cork can beat Waterford, but at the same time, Waterford are not a bad team. Do you know, like I think maybe people are looking at it in the lens of Munster because Limerick are so good, because Clare are so good. Tipperary and Cork are, are in much better places now than they were a few years ago, in my opinion. So, like, what do you think about this? I mean, are, are Cork heavy, heavy favourites? I wouldn't say heavy, heavy favourites. I do think we're a better team than Waterford, given form and everything like that. And I do think we did well towards the end of the league and we're coming into form at the right stage of the championship. The thing for Waterford, and Davy Fitz talked about this, constantly in his post-match interviews, it's the effing third quarter. That's what it is. Because Waterford... In games against Clare, in, in other games in the league as well, against um, Wexford in particular, in Walsh Park, they were in control at halftime. And then they come out in the second half and they almost just freeze. Like, if they do that against Cork, there's no doubt it'll be a hammer. And I do think, like, it's just a bad vibe in Waterford at the moment. Just, you know, the whole Davy Fitz stuff. He's done a go Callan doing well in the backroom team. Like Owen Kelly, not the Waterford Owen Kelly, the Tipperary Owen Kelly in the backroom team is bizarre. I do get, think he'll be a brilliant coach and he was a brilliant forward back in the day. But you just know, you could just smell he's going to Tipperary in the future. So why is he going to Waterford? It's the same as Liam Cal. Like, and it's just, it's almost like Waterford are the sloppy seconds for everybody in Munster. Because I don't think anybody other than Dublin, let's be honest, was going to take Davy Fitz on for the next job. Mm. And it's a war for to have took him on now. But look, they've lost Austin Gleeson. Um, Jamie Barron, will he play in this game? Stephen Bennett apparently is injured. I don't know if they're true to them rumours at all. Um, Shane Bennett, will he play in this game? Daisy Hutchinson wasn't himself in the league. Um, Patrick Fitzgerald hasn't really done well in the senior show for Waterford, but the guy's 19, 20 years of age. Like, there's too much pressure being put on these lads. And um, yeah, ultimately, I do, I don't think Cork are massive, massive favourites because Waterford could easily turn it on and they could produce a good first half performance, which Cork can't come back from in the third quarter. But I'm saying, if the game is tight at half time, I expect Cork to come out like roaring lions in the second half in the third quarter down to do Waterford. Because of the form that was shown in the league. Like, Watford were really, especially in that Wexford game, that was an opportunity to stay in Division 1A. And they blew it. They blew it, simple as. Um, I know Wexford performed well in that uh, second half with good goals from uh, Simon Donoghue in that game. But, like, you question what is wrong with the Watford mentality in that stage of a game. And mm. they have to prove the others wrong now come uh, Sunday. As for Cork, Unlike Waterford with their poor form in the third quarter and things like that in the league, Cork have looked really, really good since the Kilkenny defeat. And they've looked, I know they've only played Wexford, Offaly and um, and Waterford themselves. But Cork have looked really, really good, especially in front of goal. And Patrick Horgan's done well from the freeze. Alan Connolly scored six goals in two games and he's fully fit now. So he's going to be um, tearing Waterford asunder, it looks like, on, uh, on uh, Sunday. 
You've Shane Barr coming back into the team as well. You've other players to step in, like Eaton Toomey in midfield. Will Tommy O'Connell start in midfield? So Cork have a lot of options, and they have a lot of young players coming through the ranks as well. Jack O'Connor's done well in the league from um, the wing forward position as well, or he can start a corner forward. So yeah, Cork are going into this quietly well into the Munster Championship, but for Watford. And it's the team that David Fitz mentions. It's the third quarter. If Watford perform, if Watford perform badly in the third quarter yet again this Sunday, look, it's gone beyond help at this stage. So they need to prove the doubters wrong. There's no doubt about it. Absolutely, yeah. Like and um, like like for Watford, like they do have good players though. At the same time, like when you look at it, I mean, it was only two years ago that people were touting them as the side to go on top of Limerick and um. And I think everyone believes it. Like, obviously, Derek McGrath's famous uh, words, obviously, speaking about, um, you know, Waterford are, are going to be the ones going up the steps to uh, lift the, the Liam McCarthy and everything else. And obviously, that didn't didn't quite transport that year under under Liam Cahill. But, like, Waterford do have good players. They, you know, they're all of them finalists in 2020 as well. So, they beat Tipperary at the end of the Munster Championship last year. They showed there is a team there. There, there are good players there. Like, and... Can Davy Fitz get something out of them? Because like, don't forget, don't forget, like Davy Fitz is a good manager. Do you know, like he, he won an All Ireland with Clare, won a Leinster title with Wexford. Do you know, like you just feel like there has to be some sort of a plan here because, like, if Waterford do whimper in the Munster Championship and finish bottom, as everyone's predicting, then it's just it's an absolute waste of what I think is a very very talented team. And it's a weird thing because Watford have produced very good performances even in Munster last season and then in, in another game, they're absolutely terrible. Look, it, it, case in point last season against Limerick, on any other day, they could have beat Limerick and that was a Limerick team that went on to win four in a row all Ireland. But then the next game against Cork, they scored one point from play in a whole half in Parky Heath. Like that is, honestly, in a game of hurling, that's not acceptable. And then against Clare... They were out of it in that game. I think the most memorable moment from a Watford point of view in that game was the bowing in front of Davy Fitz. And that was embarrassing. Simple as. Tipperary did it show a fight, but it was too little too late. This is an opportunity now for Watford to shut the doubters up. Can they do it? Of course they can. It's in Walsh Park. It's in front of their home venue. It'll be a path to the rafters game in Walsh Park. And it's an opportunity for Watford to stamp their authority. But then again, in Walsh Park two seasons ago, when um, they welcomed Cork, they were massive favourites going into that game. And Cork turned up. And it was almost pitiful in the last few minutes for Watford, the way they performed. So, Watford cannot... Perform, they, like, it's not like they're not trying or anything like that. And uh, I, I get that the Watford players are trying. But it's almost like you've had so many managers in this uh, Ron Robin series now. You've had... I, I can count Derek McGrath at the start of the Ron Robin uh, era. You'd have, you'd have uh, Park Fanning, you'd have Liam Cahill, and, and now you have Davy Fitz. And you, you can't produce performances in the wrong rob, but it can't be just... And Davy Fitz is getting a lot of flack, and maybe it's a bit unfair on um, opponent's part and stuff like that. Because if the players are performing badly for every other manager other than Davy Fitz, the manager's not the problem, is he? It's the players. Mm. And they have to they have to shut the doubters up, and I stress this on Sunday. And I think there's actually more pressure um, on Watford than there is Cork. I know Cork are massive favourites, but Cork have gone under the radar in a bit um, towards the end of the league. Pat Ryan has said, OK, we've performed badly, but we've won games and things like that. But everyone's kind of expecting Cork to you know, be there and they're about to Munster and maybe have pressure on for Tipperary, Limerick and Clare. But for Watford, this might be their best chance of winning any game, other than the Tipperary game, of course. So they have to grab it with both hands. And this is, again, a chance to shut down the doubters. And what a chance to do it in front of your home attendance. But the players really have to step up here from Watford. If they don't, they could be in for a rough afternoon. They could be, yeah. Looking like if Watford were to lose, you know, by a point or two, but put in a valiant effort, put in a very good performance, I don't think anyone really would be, would be berating Watford. But I just think... When you saw Waterford get hammered by Cork last year and the year before, getting beaten quite comfortably by Clare last year, there does need to be a response. There, there definitely, definitely does. Um, looking at Cork, uh, obviously three wins, two defeats uh, in the league. Um, obviously coming in on the back of three straight wins as well after two defeats in the opening two games. I suppose the big question about Cork is, 
And I, I suppose it's the age-old question that we've discussed about Cork over the last few years is the the starting forwards. Like, there's always a lot of rotation. There's a huge amount of options for Pat Ryan. There's obviously been a huge amount of underage success in in Cork at the best of times. So I think it's been very hard for Pat Ryan to find the balance um, in Cork's attack. And I think it's something that Kieran Kingston very much struggled with as well. So I suppose that's the the big thing for Cork. Like, what six starting forwards would you want to see start against Waterford? That's the thing. That's the million dollar question. Like I looked at the last game against Wexford. They actually started a full forward line of Patrick Horb and Alan Connolly and Shane Barrett, which is an ideal full forward line, to be fair. The half forwards, Declan Dodson, Seamus Hartney and Brian Hayes. Now, I will see this categorically. I don't think Brian Hayes will start. I think he'll be on the bench. Who will come in, though? Will Jack O'Connor come in? Like, There's loads of options. Like, even with the bench against Wexford, Jack O'Connor didn't come on. Conor Lee Han came on. Shane Kingston was on the bench. Will he start on Sunday? I'm not sure. Um, you've brought, you've looped me there. Like, Tim O'Mahony can play in the forward line, and even he was employed as a forward in previous seasons as well. I think honestly, I think they're going to start that full forward line that, that they did against Wexford because Barrett adds a bit of pace into there. Conley adds goals, and Hoggy obviously adds the freeze. And obviously, I know he's in his mid thirties and things like that, and it does argument that he slows the team down. But look, Cork need to take freeze if they're going to beat a Limerick and Tipperary, Clare, and even a Watford. They need Hoggy in the field for that because obviously he's their best free taker. But what I was wondering as well, why isn't Ben Cunningham getting a go? Like he's done so well for St. Finn Bars of the club championship. He did well for the under 20s and he hasn't been on panels in previous league games. So I don't know what's the story there. Um, there's other players as well. Declan Dodds did well in the championship last season. I'd imagine Pat Ryan will go with him. Jack O'Connor as well. Seamus Hartley for experience. Like even midfield, who will they start there? It was Darf Fitzgibbon and Luke Mead last season. They've obviously put Tommy O'Connell into midfield this season and he's done really, really well. Conor O'Callaghan scored a goal from midfield against Kilkenny. Will he start there? Like the half back line is probably set in stone. Rob Downey, Kieran Joyce, and Joe Millerick probably. Um, and then like full back as well. I'd obviously, I honestly, in full back as well. I know this is going off topic with the forwards, but I'd bring Daryl O'Leary back into full back. I do think he's a very good player, both for all for Waterass Hill, for Emo Kelly in the club championship, and for Cork. I think he's just an exceptional player in the year. I do think Pat Ryan's going to go for Damien Cahalan, though. I do think Damien Cahalan's more suited to cornerback. It's going to be interesting there. Sean O'Donoghue, captain of the team now, will probably start on Downey. Another issue as well, the goalkeeper. Well, it's not necessarily an issue, but... It's a dilemma. Who does Pat Ryan go with? Uh, Brian Saunderson, who's done well for Middleton in the club championship, or Patrick Collins, who's been in the Cork um, starting team over the last few seasons? Million dollar question again. So it'd be interesting actually to see what Pat Ryan's plan is, what team will he name this week. But I put it this way, Aaron, I would be shocked if Alan Connolly's not in the team. I'd be shocked if Patrick Hogg is not in the team. I'd be shocked if Seamus Harding's not in the team. But then the other three forwards, it is a million dollar question. I'd expect it'll probably be Declan Dalton, Shane Barris, and Jack O'Connor, but we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, like what what's the mood like for for Cork going into going into the championship? Like as we said, we've obviously got Limerick and Clare in there. Um, a lot of people are obviously discounting Waterford, and look looking like it's going to be maybe between yourselves and Tipperary for that for that third place position. Albeit, look the the gap as we saw in Munster over the last few years between first and fourth has been very very few points um so what's the feeling going in like i mean this is a must win really from a core perspective because if you don't win this like you're you're up against the you know backs against the wall type situation already especially with limerick and claire still to come and other to that uh, we have the best two teams in munster at home so we have tipperary and Watford away that makes the foot fixture list extra tricky for cork um yeah it's a must win it simply is a must win I think Watford have a lot more to prove than Cork, though. And I still think there's more pressure on Watford to go into this game than there is on Cork. But Cork still have to produce good performances in the championship. Like last season, there was a bit of saying, OK, um, it was unlucky against good Tipperary sides, Clare sides, Limerick sides. And ultimately, there was a few small things that didn't go their way. Obviously, the draw against Tipperary, that rip-roaring game in Cork, that could have gone either way. Uh, the Limerick game... The Cork at 77% shot accuracy. It was almost like Cork did everything but win in that game. The Clare game was frustrating because they played really, really poorly in Ennis and Clare still won in the last minute. 
So that was frustrating for Pat Ryan to take, I'd imagine. Um, so, so yeah, it's it's a mood of, I think, because of last season and the nature of last season and the fact lot, lots of people say Cork were unlucky, I think we have to make it out of Munster this year to kind of prove that we are still one of the top dogs in Munster. So, yeah, there's a lot of pressure on Cork. And at the same time, I think, honestly, the form we got at the end of the league and the fact we weren't in the league semi-final this year, I think would be a positive for the team because they'll go into the championship, new clean slate, get on with it. Like Tipperary were in the semi-final of the league this year and got a lot of negatives off the Clare game, like the free-taking, for example. Cork kind of got those negatives off the Kilkenny game in the semi-final last season. So will it be roles reversed this year? It'll be hard to know, but... I am confident that Cork could even get out of this uh, monster group, this wrong Robin. And then uh, potentially, like if they get out of the monster, that's the key. I think they could even go far in the All Ireland. I do think there's good young players in this team. And I don't think they'll win Munster. I think Clare and Limerick are way too, are, are just better than Cork at this moment in time. But I do think with the young players there, if they get a big consistency, if Alan Connolly keeps hitting the back of the net, I think there's honestly no reason why Cork can't get out of Munster. Absolutely. And you're obviously back in Cork to win by how much? I'm going to say less than 10. I'm going to say about seven or eight. It's going to, I think it's going to be tight in the first half, but then the third quarter, Cork will run a muck at them and uh, Waterford will end up um, complaining about that particular quarter once again. Yeah, I'm going to go for a three point win for Cork. I do have a feeling Waterford are going to put in a, a performance here. I'm just expecting. There has to be something. They have to show something, um, especially after the last couple of years, like back to back years of finishing fifth in the Munster Championship. Like they have to, they have to show something, in my opinion. If they don't show anything, then I think it's, it, you know, it's 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 over. It's completely over. So yeah, I'll go for Cork to to win by three. Moving on to Leinster, I suppose the big game that stands out here is Wexford uh, against Dublin. Obviously huge for for a multitude of reasons. Um, Wexford and Dublin over the last couple of years. Have been very close. Dublin have gotten the better of Wexford on the last two occasions, and that's been one of the key differences to, that saw Dublin finishing third as opposed to uh, as opposed to fourth. Looking at it this time around, though, I think the general consensus is that Wexford are coming in in a much better place than Dublin. You look at Wexford introducing a lot more of the younger lads. Seamus Casey, very very good for for Wexford this year. Corey Byrne Dunbar, Keen Byrne, but very good as well. And then Dublin on the other hand side haven't really like it looks like Wex sort of evolved a little bit under Keith Roster. It looks like they're trying different things out, they're testing different things out. Whereas Dublin, I don't really see that under Michal Donahue, which is a massive shame. So Wexford going in as favourites. W- would you agree with that? I would absolutely. When you look at the league farms and things like that, and the fact that Wexford only lost one game in the league, and that was the Cork, and arguably that didn't matter at that stage. They drew against Clare. They drew against Kilkenny. They're going in with good form. And Keith Rossiter seems to be getting a tune out of these players. And even without Lee Chin and Conor McDonald in this team and Dio O'Keefe as well in midfield, they have excelled. They've done absolutely brilliantly. Like Seamus Casey in the full forward line, as you mentioned there. Key and Byrne have been really impressed with him in the league. I think he's a good young player to have there. Like Ross Banville's another good young player as well. Uh, Conor McGuckin is another a brilliant player. Carl Dunbar's there, there about Kevin Foley works hard. Even Connor McDonald come on as a sub in the last game against Cork. Will Lee Ching come back? If Lee Ching comes back, I think that would strengthen the case even more for Wexford. I'm not sure what the situation is there. Is he injured or what's the story? You know, Connor Horn in midfield, Damien Reck at centre back. Like, I do think Wexford are favourites for this game. But then again, we've seen this in previous seasons. Wexford seem to be going along nicely. And then when they come up against the Dublin, a team like that or an Antrim or uh, some or an Offaly they fought and they could easily do, do that again I don't know it, it, the pro- proof is in the pudding this weekend there's no doubt about it will, Dublin will obviously give it their all this is a huge chance to win the game like realistically Dublin are not going to beat Goldman Kilkenny sorry to say this aren't they're not going to do it um, so this is a massive game for them they have to beat Wexford to have any chance of getting out of Leinster and the thing is as well it's a weird situation because I think if Wexford win, it's over for Dublin. But I think if Dublin win, then it's not necessarily over for Wexford because Wexford are more capable of beating Kilkenny than Dublin are. So, like, I, I don't think, honestly, Wexford can recover. 
if Wexford can recover from a loss, but Dublin, it'll be detrimental if they lose this game. So maybe it'll be more crucial for Dublin to go on and win this game. It will be interesting to see their the dynamics come into this game and should be an interesting watch. But that's if you're going to the game, obviously. Um, ben Burney, your good friend of the Hurling podcast in Wexford, actually put up a tweet during the week saying it, this game isn't live anywhere. RT, GA, go. And honestly, Aaron, with a crucial game like this, I think that's a disgrace. So, wow, yeah, I didn't yeah. know that. I didn't know that, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I know that, I know there is a lot on this weekend, in fairness. Like, there's a lot on about football hurling. But, but, but surely they have to have this in GA go. Like, this is a this is a massive game. It's probably the biggest game for both Dublin and Wexford this year, realistically. So, so he's, look, at Wexford, my, Wexford have a weird record against Kilkenny. So they, they're probably actually more likely to get something against either Kilkenny or Galway than Dublin are, say, as an example. Um, but, like, I think it's huge for Dublin, though, because what I would say is that if Dublin do win, Dublin's next two games after this are against both Carlo and Antrim. Um, and, and they're both Carlo away, Antrim at home. And in, in and in that time period, Wexford also play Galway. So there could be a scenario where Dublin beat Wexford, then beat Carlo and Antrim, and let's say Wexford lose to Galway. That means Dublin, they already, they're already four points in front going into the final two games against both Galway and Kilkenny. So it makes those defeats irrelevant, essentially, because Dublin will will be guaranteed to at least finish in the top three, provided about Antrim or, or Carlo don't do anything extravagant in that time period. So like when you break that down, like that makes it absolutely huge for Dublin. Massive. I think it's a massive game for them. And uh... And yeah, at the same time, when you look at their games against Kilkenny and Galway, they seem to just flatter to deceive in those games. I knew no, they drew to Galway last year, but they, maybe that was just an anomaly. I, don't, I think Galway already knew themselves that they were in the Leinster final already, and they kind of just you know, tracked along and things like that. And they made a bit of a comeback at the end, but Dublin were much the superior team in that game, and they still couldn't win. So imagine if Galway and Kilkenny are in top form. So. It's going to be difficult for Dublin to see a win. But then again, Wexford were in a relegation dogfight last year and still found it in themselves to beat Kilkenny. Wexford still have this big game mentality that they can beat Kilkenny, they can beat Galway. So they'll be confident going into those games. But um, yeah, for this Dublin game, yeah, it's a crucial game more so for Dublin than it is for Wexford because I don't see Dublin beating Galway and, uh, Do- and Kilkenny. No, simple as. I know Dublin have good young players coming through, there is players from the FINA, the club champions, and they put it up to a lot of games of the club final. But I just don't see Dublin beating uh, Kikini or Galway. And I see, I've seen the highlights of their game against Limerick as well. I know that's the Limerick team. They're at the age of history. But Dublin didn't look like a top-tier team facing against Limerick. And they didn't look like a top-tier team um, against Tipperary either in Parnell Park. So, like... It's it's not looking good for um, Dublin going into this championship. But then again, these sorts of games, this pairing takes a life of its own. Wexford could start off badly and Dublin could get a run on them. That's been always the way in this game. So it's a it's a it's a big one um, to comprehend. And um, yeah, I think Dublin they have to go out and win this game. And uh, I'm sure we all done whose team will be well up for it. Yeah, I think the one thing that stands to Dublin is they, that they have beaten Wexford in the last two games. Um, and I think that does stand to them because Wexford are probably going into those games maybe as uh, slightly favourites. Um, so so that definitely does stand to to Dublin. How much are you going for in terms of Wexford? One, two points or what are you thinking? I think about three or four. I think it'll be a tight game. Uh, but I think Wexford should get over the line with their fa- in front of their fans as well. I think they have to start off strong and I'm going to go for Wexford win here. Yeah, I think I'll I think I'll edge it towards Wexford as well. Like I want to back Dublin. I want to hope that we can get something from this, but I just haven't seen it there. And I've seen a lot of improvement in in Wexford and fairness. And it kind of it does worry me. I, I've I have a feeling Wexford could could blow us away and beat us quite comfortably. Um, but I hope I'm wrong. But I am going to go for a Wexford two point win. The other two games in Leinster, we'll just kind of brush over these: Galway versus Carlo, Kilkenny versus Antrim. Um, yeah, look, Galway and Kilkenny are both going to win. I mean, I suppose that is the, the, you know, we talk about the Munster Championship being so competitive, the Leinster Championship in Hurling, to be fair, is still a lot better than the Leinster Championship in football, don't get me wrong, and there still is a lot of good games in here. But with Carlo and Antrim, unfortunately, like, you probably are going to get a lot of one-sided games, and it's probably going to be no different this weekend. 
No, it's not. Uh, Galway should win under Cancer against Carlo and Carlo, to be fair to them, they did well in the Division 2A and the Joe Mentor Cup as well, but the levels are, unfortunately, Carlo lost the leash in that league final. Galway were playing against the likes of Tipperary and Limerick in the last few seasons. And mm. they were quite, you know, respectable in those scorelines in those games. So, yeah, I, I don't see anything other than Galway being it's similar to Kilkenny as well. But it will be interesting to see what sides they put out. Will they put out second teams? I'd imagine they will. Both managers. But uh, word on Antrim, actually, we, we said they were pretty bad in the league and um, they're missing a few players. There's rumours that Keelan Malloy is actually coming back into the team for Antrim. So that's a big boost to stay up in Leinster. So um, we'll have to see how that uh, transpires in the next few weeks. And you have Joe McLaughlin scoring a load of goals in the club championship. Will he get more game time for Antrim? Remains to be seen. But yeah, God, we can to win those games easily. And um, yeah, I think... With Cardo and Antrim, unfortunately, you're going to get a lot of one-sided games, and that's just the way it is. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I suppose we'll uh, touch on the Joe McDonough Cup action. So we've got uh, Leash versus Offaly, I suppose, is really the, the standout game here. Obviously, Leash came up from Division 2 as champions, um, which was absolutely huge from their perspective. Offaly, obviously, at the same time, Division 1 this year, um, had some... Okay-ish performances, albeit they were beaten quite comfortably in a lot of them. Like they they drew at Wexford, I remember, as a standout game. Um, they've been knocking on the door of getting out of Joe McDonough for a while. You do obviously have West Mead in the Joe McDonough as well, and they're probably going to be one of the key favourites. But this is a massive game because you feel like whoever can get the edge here puts themselves in a strong, strong position to get to the Joe McDonough Cup final. Absolutely, yeah. And um it, it wore them awfully as well. They did very well in the league, in fact. Like other than I'd say the Cork game where Alan Connolly went gold for crazy in Tullamore, I think Offley were very competitive in all their games this year. They drew against Wexford, they were beaten by Kilkenny due to just a second half blitz. They were leading against Kilkenny in Nolan Park at half time. They lost to Clare by a point. And against Waterford, I think they had a guy sent off and it changed the complexion of that game. So I think they were very, very competitive to be very awfully, and they deserve a lot of credit for that. Leash themselves got a lot of positives out of the league, and this is why it's such a difficult one to call. Uh, Paddy Parson was brilliant in midfield for me. I had Division 2 way, especially in that final against uh, Carlo. I'm going to go for awfully though. I know they're away from home, home in Port Leash, but I just feel awfully they need to get out of this Joe McDonough. I do think on a side note as well, the Joe McDonough is going to be very, very competitive this year. You'll get the teams in it. You have Leash, you have Offaly, you've Westmead, who competed well against the uh, Division 1 sides as well. Kerry, who were knocking the door in the last few seasons as well. And um, and yeah, I, I think it'd be very, very competitive, especially between Westmead, Offaly and Leash. But I think Offaly will take one step towards the final crop Park and uh, win this game against Leash. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for a draw, I think, on this one. I'm going to play my uh, draw card for... For this one, like Leash are coming in, as you said, in very, very good form. Stephen Picky Mars obviously looks very, very impressive for, for Leash so far this year. Um, but as you said, like awfully need to get out of Joe McDonough. They've been knocking on the door the last few seasons, but I'm going to go for a draw. Uh, Westmead versus Kerry, you mentioned about them there. Um, David Williams has been outstanding for Westmead. Two goals, 44 points. Actually the top scorer in the entirety of of the National Hurling League, which is some going for a, for a Westmead player and probably hasn't got the um, praise that it really much deserves. But Westmead at home, uh, they've obviously been playing at a much higher level all year. You'd fancy them to be Kerry? Yeah, unfortunately. Like, look, I want Kerry Hurling to develop, but at the same time, Shane Conway has actually left the panel. There's rumours that he's he's gone out of the panel in the last few weeks, so that's a huge loss to Kerry Hurling. Massive. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go for Westmead. They look very good in the league, in Division 1 in particular. David Williams, as you mentioned there, and you've other players as well. Will uh, Kieran Doyle come back into it? Killian Doyle, all them. Like, if they come back into it, Wexford could be unstoppable. You have uh, other players like Shane Williams as well. I don't know if him and David are related, but Shane's another excellent corner forward there for Westmead. So, yeah, I'd fancy Westmead to go on and win the game. And Kerry, unfortunately, because they were in a few drama done the finals in a row, and they should have won a few. Then the likes of Shane Conway step away. Fiona McKessie thinks about playing football and things like that. It doesn't help. So I'm going to go for Westmead win. It's unfortunate for Kerry. But yeah, it's it's, it's just the way it is, Aaron, isn't it? If, if sides, they get kind to a ceiling. And if you can't get higher than that, players just drop out. And it's just unfortunate. 
for uh, Kerry in many ways and Stephen Malone for who's managing him this year. So, you know, I'm going to go for Westmead to win the game. Yeah, I think so as well. I'll go for Westmead to win it by four. And down versus Mead is the last one. Um, you feel like this is maybe at the opposite end of the spectrum in the Joe McDonough. Uh, Mead are arguably the favourites to go down, um, and, and pardon the pun there, but down themselves, like they could arguably go down as well. Like they're they're certainly in the conversation. So big game this. Thing is, well, me to start um, after the league campaign, it's been a hard um, a few few weeks for them. Uh, Searsha Bolfin, their manager, actually stepped down because of family commitments. So obviously, wishing Searsha all the best, but yeah, um, that's a huge loss to me. Huge loss to me, hurling, and it, it doesn't help going into the John McDonough Cup losing a manager like that. And down at the other end, they have a manager that's there for you know for getting the best out of down hurling. Ronan Sheehan, very good coach. He still appears up a quick arm there. Very good hurler. Yeah, I'm going to go for Down to win this game. And uh, I think Down could actually finish fourth in this because of the way Kerry and Mead are actually set up in this uh, division. It's just West Mead awfully niche are too good for Down, unfortunately, for their sakes. But yeah, I'm going to go for Down to win it. Yeah, I'd probably agree with that as well. I'd probably put Down into into fourth. Um, they, they are the type of team as well that are probably can pull off a bit of a surprise and a bit of a shock every now and again. So you certainly wouldn't be wouldn't be against it and fairness before we finish up then in terms of player of the week bet of the week what are you thinking player of the week I'm going to go for I'm going to nail my Cork um, colours to the mass I'm going to go for Alan Connolly for um for Cork like if he scores another hat-trick that'll be a triple hat-trick so three in a row wouldn't it, can, yeah. three in a row yeah so if he could do that that'll be probably a record that can't be touched it's Absolutely incredible, and he's well able to hit the back of the net, the Black Rock man. So, yeah, I'm going to go for Alan Connolly as player of the week. For um, for surprise of the week or bet of the week, I'm trying to look here because I'm, I'm looking down through the divisions, uh, Christy Ring and all them. Uh, it's a tight one because you can't really expect a surprise in Munster. Leinster probably not either. Wexford are going to beat Dublin. Um, I'm going to go. Oh, this is a tough one. I'm looking through the games here. Um... I'm gonna go in the Laurie. I ah, know the Nicky Rocker Cup. I'm gonna go for Low to beat Arva. Why not? Just that. There we go. There we go. Yeah, that's the that's an interesting one um, as well. Yeah, just on the Christy ring. Like obviously we had games last week. Kildare obviously beating Sligo quite comfortably as well. So um, we didn't quite get the games that we wanted to see. You know, we were hoping we we'd get to see some of the Christy ring cup matches, but. Um, Kildare obviously back on the the hall. You'd fancy them to come back up in the Christie ring. Oh yeah, definitely. Like yeah, they did a very good performance now against Sligo last week, and Carl Dowling getting two goals. And they've good players all over the field. They've Brian Dowling there as manager, the former Kilkenny Kabogi manager, who's won two All Ireland titles as coach. So yeah, I think Kildare should come back straight back up uh, from the Christie ring cup. And to be honest, Kildare shouldn't be in that division anyway. Let's be honest. I think they're. I think they are a better team than Kerry. I think they're a better team than Mead. Potentially down as well. So, like Kildare shouldn't be in the Christie ring. But uh, just on a side note as well, it's about the Sunday game. Aaron, they were talking about the Leinster structures and uh, um, Paul Flynn and uh, Sean Cavanaugh was bringing out the tactics board of the Fermanagh and Armagh game. And there was no time for Christie ring, Nicky Rackard, all them competitions. It's just that was a perfect opportunity last week, and the Sunday game blew it. Simple as, and I'm sure me, yourself, myself, and Seamus will do that video about um, ideas in the GA. That's probably going to come soon. And um, keep your eyes peeled for that one. But um, one of the ideas is clearly just to show more games in these competitions. Use Clubber, use Stream Sport, all these um, sites just to show these games, show what good orders there are. And it's a bit hypocritical from RT as well. They did an episode about developing hurling, inviting the low captain and the Westmead manager in. And yet they don't show Christy Reen, Nicky Rackard, Laurie Maher games last week. And there was p- plenty of time. Mm. Like, I don't get yeah. it. I really don't get it. It's ridiculous. Yeah, no, it, it is very disappointing in fairness. And considering there wasn't many games to show and a lot of the games were very one-sided as well. Like there was no need to, to go into it in big detail. But yeah, like looking at the games in the Christie ring this weekend, you've got Derry against Tyrone. You've got London uh, against Sligo. Kildare are playing uh, Wicklow as well. And then looking at the Nicky Rackard Cup, you've got Monaghan against Roscommon, Donegal against Mayo and Loud versus 
Armagh. And then in uh, the Laurie Mar Cup, then uh, you've got Lancashire against Leitrim. You've got Fermanagh versus Cavan and Warwickshire versus Longford. So hopefully we, we get to see some of these games at some point, maybe... Um, Obviously not this year. It's not going to change, but but maybe next year it can be yeah, it can be something they look at. Um, yeah. In terms of my player of the week, um, I'm gonna go for Aaron Gland for Limerick. I mean, I know that's a bit of a boring one, but I think he can. He's the ability to tear players' defense inside and out. And better the week, as you said, there isn't really any there. If there was one, I would maybe edge towards. Um, look, I, I think Limerick beating Clare in some ways is a better the week because I think Clare may be going in as slightly favourites. Um. Like I'd, I'd look at Waterford beating Cork, maybe not, but to keep the margin under three or four, I think is is very very possible. But um, but there we go. Yeah, let us know in the comments. Anyone who's tuned in, your predictions and and your preview for the weekend's games. Thank you to Matthew for tuning uh, for for coming on the show. Make sure to check out the Gaelic Sassman podcast when you get a chance, and we'll speak to you.